Welcome to this workshop by Neil Nanda on forming your own views on AI safety. In this session, Neil will outline why you might want to form your own views about AI safety, why this can actually be overrated, common traps, pitfalls and misconceptions, and concrete first steps for trying to do this. Neil is an AI interpretability researcher currently on sabbatical and doing some independent research. Previously, he worked on large language model interpretability with Chris Oller and Anthropic. Thank you and please welcome Neil. Um, yeah, uh, thanks everyone for coming. So, general context setting, uh, I think this is marketed as a workshop. I'm roughly planning to spend about two-thirds of it speaking and about a third doing various exercises and trying to think for yourself. Um, the general point of this is being like ways I think people often think about inside views in ways that are potentially incorrect or unhealthy. The way I think about inside views and why I think it's healthier, concrete ideas for doing this and how to evaluate like how much you should actually care about this and how much time it's actually worth spending on this, um, and common traps I myself have in the past fallen into or that I observe other people falling into. Uh, general epistemic note, as with most EA talks, EA is a young movement, so these people are far too junior to be in positions like giving a talk. Um, I'm gonna give a bunch of hot takes and my personal opinions. I expect lots of people to disagree with me, and you should go talk to those other people and not just trust what I'm saying. Um, but yeah, so to begin, I wanna chat about what an inside view is. And first, I think it's helpful to look at a kind of rough caricature of what are some views I hear in the community. An inside view, as say, some people in the Bay Area seem to refer to it, can be caricatured as something like, fully understanding every last detail of why you might think AI safety matters, not relying on anyone else or trusting in anything anyone else believes, but purely reasoning from objective facts about the world to be completely confident in why AI safety is the most important thing you should be working on. And a caricatured version of the opposite, deferring, is just being like, I know absolutely nothing but smart people like, Elia Ziodkowski or Toby Ord or Paul Cristiano say this is important, so shrug, I'm gonna work on it. And um, one key point I wanna make is that I think both of these are just kind of obviously ridiculous. Like, you can do better than literally knowing nothing about a topic beyond smart people agree with it. But I also think it's wildly unrealistic to actually have a true inside view in the sense of fully understanding every last detail from first principles and not trusting anyone. And first, I want to just like chat a bit about why I believe it. I forgot to animate this slide, damn. So the first reason that I disagree with this slightly caricatured view, um, oh, I should probably give a general caveat. Everyone here is coming from pretty different backgrounds. I'm vaguely assuming the kind of context people have, but this is obviously gonna vary. I'm currently trying to respond to a common narrative about inside views that I experience from some people, especially people who hang out a bunch in the Bay Area or on the Element Forum a lot. I imagine many people here will not come from such backgrounds, and if what I'm saying seems wildly not applicable to you, you can just kind of ignore it. Um, but yeah, why I disagree with this caricature. The first point, which I think is pretty underrated, is that if you think the point of an inside view is to form beliefs that are as close to the truth as you can, the best case scenario you can really hope for is still a pretty low probability of finding the true thing. And the reason for this is pretty simple. There are lots of people who are plausibly smarter than you, plausibly no, have thought no more about ASAP than you, and have plausibly spent much longer thinking about it than you have. These people often disagree. If by thinking hard and trying to truth seek and find inside views, you could systematically find the one true way of thinking about AI safety, we would not observe that many people, even within the EA community who agree on like 90% of things, 
wildly disagree about pretty important questions. Um, you just can't reasonably expect to get something that's actually true in an objective sense about such a confusing question about which many people disagree. Uh, the second point I want to make is that the world is really, really complicated. Like, if you want to understand a question like, how big a deal is AJX risk, or should I work on it? Um, just like one sub-question you might care about is AI timelines. How long until we get human-level AI? But this has so many subfields that feed into it. Like, you want to think about things like, um, how does AI work? What are the paths to AGI? You might think there's a path that involves scaling up GPT-3-style models, in which case you need to think about things like, what are the economics of how useful these models are? What is the mindset of tech CEOs? How expensive is it to make AI hardware? And how fast does this progress? How likely are international governments to get involved? Is there going to be a US-China AI arms race? And like each of these are ridiculously hard and complicated questions that deep experts on the field are going to significantly disagree about. There is basically no way you are going to get a like full and coherent view on a complex question that involves deeply understanding a load of fields. Um, and like basically everything about the world is going to involve some amount of deferring to people, taking arguments I don't fully understand but like vaguely follow, and focusing my efforts of understanding things on like specific things where I think I'm gonna get the best returns. And my like overall conclusion from this standard narratives are pretty overrated case is that the way you should think about forming an inside view is not as though there is some like perfect ideal of fully understanding things from first principles that you can achieve and you're failing if you do not get there. The way I think about it is there is some abstract ideal of fully understanding things myself. This is wildly unattainable, but I can make progress towards that. And the kinds of views I can hold lie on a spectrum between I know absolutely nothing beyond that smart people think is important to I fully understand everything. And trying to get as far to the right on that spectrum as you can is like reasonably good and worthwhile. But you should not anchor yourself to like some idealized notion of what you can achieve. Um, so now with that framing, I want to chat more concretely about what inside views might look like and why you might actually want to form one. So first, I want to try presenting a rough framework of how I think about inside views. Uh, the goal of this is not to fully capture everything anyone might mean, but to give a pretty concrete thing that I think is a reasonably good starting point, especially if you just don't feel like you have one at all. And this is roughly that the way to think about an inside view is starting with some confusing question and zooming in on that, breaking down the complex question into a series of simpler claims and simpler arguments where believing all of those claims gives you the overall claim. So let's do a concrete example. Um, a high level question you probably care about is um, the statement, it is valuable to work on reducing API X risk. Um, I think that a first, very like weak first draft of an inside view might look something like this. Um, first, AGI seems likely to happen in the next 50 years. Um, if AGI is created, by default, it is likely to want things we don't want it to do that will plausibly involve it wanting to ultimately create an X risk. If AGI exists and wants to cause an X risk, it will likely succeed at this. And there are actions we can take today that will make AGI X risk less likely. Um, this is just like an example of what a really rough inside view might look like. I think that as inside views get more sophisticated, what they in practice look like is something like taking each of these points and then ex zooming in on them too, expanding those into subclaims and those into subclaims, bringing in evidence and historical data and models of the world that might support some of these claims. But the 
ultimately, if you're trying to get started at forming an inside view, you should aim to start with some question you care about and build some expanding tree of arguments that look something like this. And there's a few features of this that I wanna draw attention to. Um, say, expanding to subclaims. Uh, the next is that these are all kind of probabilistic claims. Like I'm not saying it is obviously 100% true about the world that AGI will happen in the next 50 years and that I would bet at a million to one odds that this would happen. This is like obviously ridiculous. Um, but you want a view that involves statements that are like a bit uncertain, but are like on balance, I think it is plausible that the following is true um, and that it's kind of unrealistic to put anything better than that. The second is I think this makes more concrete my initial claim of you shouldn't try to form a perfect inside view. You should instead try to make progress towards one within this framework. Progress is extremely tangible. It's just taking a claim and expanding it into more subclaims. And yeah, finally, this still has black boxes. Like I might defer to someone on the statement AGI will happen in the next 50 years and say something like, OpenPhil has a 200 page report that people in the community sure seem to think is good. It's plausibly not the best allocation of my time right now to read that full report. So I'm going to semi take it on faith that there are some legit arguments in there. Uh, I think ideally you would dig into all of these claims, but that it is still progress to go from um, it is valuable to work on AJ Actress because smart people say so, to it is valuable because of the following four reasons, and I believe each of these by deferring to potentially different people who I think have thought about these particular questions. Um, and yeah, so with this framework, I want to take the first exercise, which is just practice doing this. Pick a question that feels important to you. I've got some examples on the slides. By default, I recommend choosing AGI X risk is um, a pressing problem that more people should be working on and practice expanding it into subclaims. If you find this easy, try expanding some of those subclaims into more subclaims and just pick a question that feels interesting to you and try doing this for five minutes. Um, before we jump into that, does anyone have any questions on like, does the exercise make sense? Cool. Um, yeah, I'm gonna be distributing some resources at the end, which includes these slides, so no need to take pictures unless you find that helpful in the moment. Yes? Oh, what if we call it to like practice expanding like this other people or are we expanding this on our own? Um, I don't know, you do you, man. Seems plausibly <laughs> good, seems plausibly bad, different people have different tastes. I am not here to dictate how you should go about doing this kind of thing. Uh, but cool, in that case, I will set a five minute timer and hope people can make some progress. I recommend not obsessing over which question, just pick one that feels alive to you and dive into that. Is there only five minutes? Okay, uh, that's been about five minutes, so I'm gonna move on. Would appreciate if people stop talking and um, so I'm curious to just check in on how people found that. Can I get a hand poll from that felt useful and I made a lot of progress down to what the hell is going on from people? Just to get a general read of the room. Uh, well, most people are around the middle, acceptable enough. Um, but cool. So now I want to chat a bit about why you might care about this. Um, so I'm gonna give four reasons and then chat about ways I think they're often under or overrated. Uh, the first I was chatting about at the beginning, uh, truth tracking. This idea that trying to form an inside view will result in you systematically having uh, more true like beliefs that are closer to the underlying truth than you would have by default. Um, and as I was arguing earlier, I think this is like surprisingly hard and somewhat overrated. Like, just can't, given that lots of people who have thought about this harder than I have disagree, the cap on how close I can get to truth is likely just somewhat low. Um, a baseline worth thinking about here is if I just took the five P 
people in EA who generally seem like they thought the most about AI safety and people agree with the most randomly pick one of the five and say, I'm going to believe everything they say, how much more likely are you to be tracking truth than just following that baseline? I think you can do better, but I'm not convinced you can do like significantly better. Um, and yeah, I think that there is some substance to this. You will probably have views that are closer to the truth if you spent 100 hours thinking about inside views rather than zero. But yeah, the cap is like lower than I think most people intuitively expect it to be. Um, second, uh, motivation. Um, by this I mean it's kind of often much harder to work on something that you vaguely intellectually think is important but don't really on a gut level get why it matters um, in the same way that, I don't know, it's harder to work on something with a 1% chance of being important and a 99% chance of being useless than something that's uh, definitely going to be somewhat useful. Um, uh, this kind of varies between people. I think there are some people for whom this just doesn't really matter. They can get their motivation from other things about the work, like how much they enjoy, how much they like their coworkers, how much their friendship group or their community get, like socially reinforces them, how much they just on an object level enjoy the problems they're working on. Um, I kind of expect most people here just have a reasonable enough idea of how important this is to them. Personally, this is really important to me and one of the main reasons I've spent time thinking about inside views, but people are different. Um, third, having an inside view can often help you be a much better researcher. Um, I think this is a really important point, but the, it is worth disentangling this from the notion of tracking truth. So why might you believe this? Generally, I found that when doing research, the internal experience is something like, I have some intuition for a thing that ought to be true about the world, and I am trying to prove that that thing is true. And there are lots of day-to-day -day decisions I end up needing to make differently, um, depending on like subtle details of what experiments or ideas I think are more likely to get me to a correct answer. And I think that having a clear intuition of why the thing that I'm working on should be true um, can be uh, like pretty helpful for this. But importantly, this is much more of a local thing than the global nature of inside views. If I'm working on an interpretability problem, I might have some intuition for like why I should be able to say, um, interpret how a network knows that the Eiffel Tower is in Paris. And I might have an inside view on how the network does that. And my story for how knowing how the network does that is relevant to reducing extras might be totally wrong, but this probably won't affect my ability to do good research on that concrete question. Um, I think this is, this, there's a similar principle that's useful even beyond research. Like if you're say, thinking about strategy for an alignment org or alignment community building effort, having views on which areas are more likely to be useful for the problem or having views on exactly how we might end up coordinating on AI can be useful for lots of the small subtle decisions you need to make constantly to be doing your job. Um, but that often these inside views can be a lot more local than having a full thing starting from X risk and going back to your concrete daily actions. And finally, um, there's this argument from community epistemics. Um, there's this idea called information cascades, which is roughly, say you've got a community of 100 people, and one of them starts loudly saying, um, AI safety is really important. And someone hears them, and they're like, that person is smart, I'm gonna also say AI safety is important. And then a third person comes along, and they're not super compelled by the first person, but they see two people believe this, and they're like, oh wow, I guess this makes sense. And so you have three, and you get four, and you might end up with like 100 people believing that AI safety is really important, but the, all of the actual work was done by one person, and everyone else is just double counting evidence. 
And this is a kind of toy example, but I think this is a pretty big problem when you have communities, especially communities like EA that can be a bit insular, believe really weird shit that most people in the world don't think is true, um, and often have like different worldviews and values than the outside community. Uh, and I think this is important and worth tracking. Um, but I also think that like, I don't know, I don't actually think that you need every person within EA or even within AI safety to be contributing to community epistemics in this way. I think that if half of the people within AI safety are thinking hard about inside views, that's likely basically sufficient for good community health. And I think there are also ways you can communicate controlling for your current level of an inside view that can significantly impact how bad things are for community epistemics. Like if you're a community builder and you don't really fully get why AI safety matters, but smart people think it does. I think you can do community building without significantly contributing to this problem by like very clearly flagging. I don't fully understand this. The arguments vaguely check out to me. Here are some sources you can look at. Please check them yourself and don't take my opinion as strong evidence this is true above and beyond like these resources I can point you to. I think that's pretty good for community epistemics and doesn't require you to have an inside view. Um, I don't know. I'm partially orienting to this as here's why inside views are overrated, but I also think that inside views are actually worth forming. And I think that all of these reasons are like kind of legit. Um, and I'm mostly presenting things in this way because I think some people should try hard form inside views, some people should try a bit, and some people shouldn't try at all. And better understanding why this matters in a clear and concrete way can help you evaluate how much effort it is worth putting into this yourself. Um, now I want to chat a bit about misconceptions, ways I think people get really stressed about forming inside views, and ways this personally made getting into AI safety much harder for me. Um, so rattling through some beliefs I've seen in myself or other people, I cannot do anything until I have figured out a full inside view on AI safety. It is bad to go and work at an org or try doing some research until I fully understand the problem and have my own views on it. And if I'm deferring to people at all, that's terrible, and I'm being catastrophically bad to community health if I don't fully understand everything. Um, I need to figure this out really urgently. Um, say, I'm a year from graduating, I want to work on AI safety after I graduate or do a PhD, but it would only make sense to do an AI PhD if I know AI safety is important. So I must form an inside view really fast. Um, Forming an inside view should be easy. Loads of people in EA have done it. People talk to me confidently about how they know AI safety is important. So they must have inside views, and I am failing if I don't have my own inside view. Um, misconception four. There's like one true agenda or perspective. Um, there's... Um, there, yeah, there's like one true agenda or perspective, and if I just think hard enough about the problem, I will definitely find that, and I can go work on that. This is a hard problem. People in the field disagree, and most people in the field think there are multiple agendas that are pretty legit and pretty promising, even if the average person in the field probably thinks that at least 10 to 20% of other agendas are kind of BS. Um, and even if you go and work on something that you later think is not actually that useful. You can just switch. Like, I spent a few months working on three separate agendas before I started doing interpretability. I am much less excited about those than I am about interpretability, and switching was just kind of fine. Um, and final misconception, um, it is terrible and bad to ever defer to anyone on anything to do with AI safety. Like, if I don't, if I haven't fully evaluated the arguments myself, I like can't reasonably act as though this thing is true. Um, and I must just have this perpetual cloud of uncertainty in my head. Um, I now want to give some like personal story of like how these misconceptions made me a lot more stressed getting into AI safety and um, made the path much bumpier for me. Um, yeah, 
Uh, in general, I think narratives about inside view just made me consider everything to be much higher stakes and more stressful than it actually was. Um, I kind of felt like I ought to have been able to come up with an inside view that um, there was like one true agenda that I could find if I just thought about it hard enough and it would be catastrophic if I tried working on an agenda that wasn't the one true agenda that I needed to figure this out before graduating because everyone knows that the thing you do after you graduate is what you must do for the rest of your life. And um, yeah, this almost got me to just be like, this is really stressful. I'm not a good enough person to try exploring a career path that requires this constant level of stress. Screw it, I'm gonna go do earnings to give in finance because that's way more comfortable and involves fewer complicated questions. And yeah, um, I don't currently think that I have a perfect, elaborate, true inside view. I also think I've done good research. I hope it has at least slightly reduced X risk from AI. I think I'm forming a better inside view with time, um, but I did not need to form a true inside view before I could do things that were useful. Um, here are some tips on healthily forming inside views. On a slide I forgot to animate. Um, so firstly, you don't have to form an inside view in order to work on AI safety or do things that would contribute to it or tell other people that it's important to work on. A framework I find helpful here is the notion of comparative advantage. If like maybe half the people within the field of AI safety or like fields adjacent to it like relevant community building or operations management and stuff like that um, should be trying to form inside views, then an important question to ask is, am I above or below the median person who would work in this field at doing this? Half of people will not be. Um, this means that and evidence that it might not be your comparative advantage is maybe you try it and get incredibly stressed or incredibly disheartened or just totally overwhelmed and feel really paralyzed. If this is happening to you, you have my full permission to just not to do this and just be like, I'm gonna try working on this, even though I don't have a full inside view because I think it's probably important, even if I'm not fully compelled as to why. You can also just not work on it, go do something else. The world is full of problems that are important. And just because the EA in-group thinks that only AI and bio are important doesn't mean you need to. Um, Secondly, um, forming an inside view kind of just happens naturally over time, especially if you're engaging with EA, reading a lot, and in particular working in the field. Like, I spent most of my time at Anthropic doing reasonably object level interpretability work. And I now feel like I've got much better inside views for how interpretability might um, decrease X risk. Um, not because I like, tried really hard to optimize for forming them, but just because learning more about the world and forming thoughts is useful for forming better inside views. It also doesn't matter an incredible amount if you have a mistaken view of like what the best agenda to work on is. Most decisions are reversible. If you try working in a team on this problem with an org with several agendas, it's likely very easy to switch. Even if you're in an org only working on one agenda, you can probably move. If you're doing a PhD, um, you might have a lot of flexibility. Um, you also might not because PhDs are a mess, but I'm not an academic. Um, third, inside views are on a continuum. Um, you can make progress towards forming an inside view, and it is like good and productive to make this progress. And if you're a perfectionist who is saying, I am failing unless I have a full inside view and any progress I make is wildly um, insufficient, so I should feel really guilty about it. Uh, a, I think this is kind of unhealthy. B, I'm sorry. And C, if a thing you are doing is making you perpetually feel really guilty and paralyzed, you are probably orienting to this in a way that is both incorrect, unproductive, and unhealthy. And it's worth thinking about that, though, nah. Being told that what you're doing is not the best way of doing it is not a thing that necessarily solves all problems. Sorry. And finally, expect it to take a long time 
to actually form a legitimate inside view. Um, one analogy that I find pretty helpful is a PhD. One framing for thinking of PhDs is that a PhD is like an apprenticeship program that is designed to get someone with a decent grounding in a field to the point where they have picked out some niche and are a world expert in that niche and can meaningfully contribute original research to it. And PhDs take like three to six years and are often on like a very small niche part of an academic field. Um, AI X risk is ridiculously complicated and involves at least 10 different fields. Um, if getting to the point where you can meaningfully do original research within an area uh, takes like three to six years, you should probably expect that forming a like legitimate inside view on something is also gonna take years. Um, and if this feels disheartening, I'll reiterate, uh, you don't need to form an inside view to do things. It will also happen naturally over time. But I think you can put in more effort to make it happen better. Um, on that note, what concrete actions could you take to do this better? Um, so, a general, the general framework I'd wanna give here is that you should disentangle understanding what arguments people might give for or against a position, um, or like why other people believe things from evaluating whether you personally believe that. Um, there are some really complicated, messy questions in here. And a common mistake is to try to simultaneously understand and evaluate things. And say, read an article, be like, this seems kind of dodgy, uh, so I'm not sure I can fully believe this, and just kind of bounce off and never really make progress on it. I think the way you should concretely try to form an inside view is first to try to understand things without trying that hard to evaluate whether you believe them, and then to actually try to evaluate whether you think they're true. Um, so to get started and do understanding, some concrete things I think are pretty good. One is to read and summarize things. Um, read some of the good AI alignment resources or articles. Um, I have a list a Google Doc of resources I'll send around at the end, and then try to summarize it. Uh, concretely, I recommend trying to write a short bullet point summary of what are the key arguments made in the post and why the author believes them, and to actually write this up rather than just vaguely holding it in your head, because it's very easy to trick yourself into thinking you've understood something when you haven't. Um, and writing it down forces you to be more honest with yourself. In a similar vein, talk to people and try to paraphrase back to them um, what they're saying and why they believe it. Well, by paraphrase, I just mean say back to them in your own words what you think they've been saying and check whether they think that is a good summary. Um, you could also, after the conversation, sit down and try to write up a proper summary and send it to the person afterwards. If you're, say, at a conference and having lots of one-on-ones with people, this is a very productive thing to do during those one-on-ones. Um, and yeah, to emphasize the goal with these initial steps is to understand things rather than necessarily to agree with them. Um, secondly, um, improving these like initial views you might hold and like candidate inside views um, or evaluating. Uh, the first thing is to zoom in, uh, take this like tree of arguments you have um, and like claims and subclaims for why you might believe a position and then just keep picking them and trying to expand them. And secondly, to uh, pick um, one claim or one implicit belief, and then to try to generate as many counter arguments of that as you can. Try as hard as you can to break that claim and convince someone that the claim is not true and see how far you can get. Um, if you feel kind of stuck, uh, one thing I particularly recommend is set a five minute timer when, especially if you try uh, things on the um, evaluation side, this latest point is not work on screens, um, to zoom in or generate counter arguments. It can be kind of like overwhelming and daunting, um, especially if things feel hard or you feel a bit new and insecure. And I think a really good way to get a foothold is just set a five minute timer 
and try to make as much progress as you can in that five minutes. Worst case, you just spent five minutes thinking about a worthwhile question that made much progress. But I find that in practice, often the thing that is stopping me is a vague flinch of this feels hard, rather than some concrete thing where this is like actually not something I'm capable of doing. Um, quickly running through an example of each of these evaluation strategies. Um, here's a claim from the toy and side gave at the start. AGI will likely happen in the next 50 years. Um, and I might break this down in some claims like um, a sufficiently good language model is human level intelligent, where I'm leaving as a black box exactly what this means, um, but something fuzzily on the lines of a sufficiently good version of GPT-3 could reasonably be called AGI. Um, current techniques, in particular for making language models, will keep, keep getting better as we get more computing power and more training data, um, where kind of an implicit sub-argument might be there's this result called scaling laws, which I think is really important um, for why you might believe this. Um, we will actually have enough compute in practice to get there by 2070. Um, and implicitly, people will actually use this compute to train these models. Um, I'm not saying this is a full and beautiful and coherent inside view that involves no deferring, but I think it is better than just saying a black box of AGI will happen in the next 50 years. Um, here's an example of generating counter arguments. Claim, if AGI is created, by default, you will want to cause X risk. Here's a random scattering of arguments against this. Uh, there's no economic incentive to make a dangerous system, so people won't. In fact, there's actively a strong incentive to make systems that are not dangerous because you get paid more money if your system is not dangerous and doesn't try to kill its operators. Um, we'll get warning shots. People will try making subhuman systems that do dangerous things. The world will wise up and we'll raise our standards for safety before we get to anything truly dangerous. So by the time AGI is created, we'll have solved safety by default. Maybe alignment will be really easy. Maybe just training a system by having people give it feedback on how it's doing is sufficient to get it to be aligned. Um, maybe the entire notion of an AGI wanting things is like nonsense, and this is just us anthropomorphizing. Maybe uh, the way a system works will look more like GPT-3's short-sighted attempts to predict the next word as best as it can, rather than it being some like grand sovereign that has a utility function over the light cone of the universe that it's aggressively optimizing. Um, I don't necessarily think that all or any of these arguments are correct, but I think that evaluating them would help me, like ha has helped me get more traction on this claim. And yeah, so next exercise. Uh, I'll probably only do this for 10 minutes, so I have a bit of time to wrap up. Um, take your inside view from the first exercise and practice one of these techniques on it. Pick some subclaims and try to zoom in and see as far as you can get, um, or try to generate counter arguments. Pick some subclaim you're interested in and then try to like break it and come up with as many reasons you can as to why it's bad. Um, if you are like, what? I have no idea how I would do this. Uh, I don't know enough about this field to have any real traction. Then a thing which I recommend as an alternate exercise that might be a better starting point for people who are super new to these things is there's this great article called Why AI Alignment Could Be Hard with Modern Deep Learning by Ajay Akotra. It's like a couple of thousand words. I recommend going and starting to read it and trying to write out some summaries for yourself. Uh, I don't expect you to get through the whole thing or be able to write a good summary. I recommend just starting to read through and trying to distill it. Uh, if you Google the words on the sleep screen, you should find the article. It will be on a website called Cold Stakes. Uh, yeah, are there any questions on specifically what I am suggesting people do in this exercise?
then I'll check in in 10 minutes. Cool. That's been approximately 10 minutes. So I'm going to generally give some closing thoughts and share some resources and next steps. Um, probably the most important next step is just, if you found what you did just now useful, you can just do this on your own whenever you want. Um, I think that the main way you form inside views is just by like trying and doing things. And ideally doing things that are like actually useful rather than terrifying and stressful and paralyzing, which hopefully that wasn't. Um, though please do let me know if it was, that'd be useful calibration. But yeah, so first, just some like general tips for how to orient towards forming inside views. Um, the first point, which can be pretty empowering and or hard for some people, is you are allowed to disagree with people. Um, even if those people are like cool and high status and say a bunch of other things you think are correct or feel really intimidating. Um, objectively, there are lots of people who are intimidating and high status who say things that contradict each other. So at least one of them is wrong. And you are allowed to disagree with them. You don't have to believe something just because someone who is, feels high status says so. Second, don't be a monk. Don't, the way to form an inside view is not necessarily to just like hide away in some ivory tower and think really hard and try to form truth from the abstract ether of pure thought. Um, a pretty effective way of forming an inside view is go out in the world, do things, do an intro to ML course, try to actually do some alignment research, read some papers and posts. Um, everything is on a spectrum. Uh, this is maybe the fourth time I'm saying this point, but I'm gonna reiterate it because I think it's really important. Um, there is no inside view versus not inside view dichotomy. Everything is on a spectrum of how much you are deferring to people. And you wanna try to get as far as you can towards inside views while accepting that trying to get further has opportunity costs. There are other things you could do with that time and energy. And that there comes a point where this is not actually that useful. As a rough ballpark, I'd say something like maybe 10% of your time should be spent trying to form inside views. A bit more if you're like figuring out what does go into the field and are like very new and a bit less if you'd like feel pretty experienced and into it already. Um, fourth, you can defer intelligently. Uh, deferring is not necessarily some like blind passive thing of just following the social incentives of who is cool and who to listen to. You can be smarter about it. For example, you might say, I'm gonna defer to this person because here are a bunch of questions that I expect are about as hard in similar ways to this claim, and I've evaluated those and they were correct. If you formed an inside view on like three of the 10 questions that feel relevant to you, and you agree with one person on all three of those, then deferring to them for the other seven is pretty reasonable. Um, another thing you can do is try to figure out how likely is this person to be likely to actually have true beliefs? Are they in an environment where they are getting good feedback from the world? For example, I defer a lot better, I defer a lot more to um, like scientists who get lots of data and empirical feedback from the world than moral philosophy professors who I mostly ignore because they get no feedback on whether what they're saying is correct. Um, fifth, form deep inside views within a domain. Like I want to have a really good inside view on how to do interpretability work and why interpretability work might be important. And I care way less about other things, like is AI coordination possible? And I can ignore that. Um, ML skill is neither necessary nor sufficient to form an inside view. Um, oh, rip. Uh, should I just talk loudly? Oh, rip. Thanks. Um, yes. Uh, ML skill is neither necessary nor sufficient for forming an ML view, uh, forming an inside view. You don't need to like be any good at ML to have a view on things like 
would a computer program that can think like a human be dangerous? And there are lots of people who are like experts in ML who believe loads of really dumb stuff about AI. Um, I'm going to mostly skip over this because it's just summarizing the key points um, to be like um, some like next steps. Um, there is a Google Doc of resources and useful links that I made um, at this link. Um, and you can maybe scan a QR code. And finally, an experiment that I'm running. Um, I think that the main way you form an inside view is by just practicing and spending time on things. And also that this is like hard and often not that motivating and easy to prioritize other stuff. And it's easier to do if you can like chat with other people and support each other and hold each other accountable. So as a random experiment, um, if you fill out the form on the second link, I will randomly assign you to groups of three to four people to meet up and chat about things. Um, and maybe you'd find that useful. But yeah, I will end things there. I think it's approximately three, so we won't do a Q&A, but I'll be around here for the next 10-ish minutes if you want to ask me questions. Thanks. Cheers.